This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaboration of Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office and its partners, where we showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses. My name is Victoria. I will be talking to our guest, uh, Jason Kalani, who is an owner of two businesses here, Kapolei Karaoke and Kawailoa Tavern. Uh, hello, Jason. Welcome Hi. to our show. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So before we jump into business questions, can you just please tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I was uh, born and raised in Waihewa. My family's from North Shore. Uh, I went to high school at Lilihua. Um, I went to college at the University of Hawaii. I got a degree in political science. I have a master's in business. Um, I've also served in the military. I was uh, enlisted for about four years, went to officer candidate school. Um, I got my commission as a field artillery officer, deployed. Um, I've served as a platoon leader, battery commander, operations officer, executive officer, brigade fire support officer. So I've done all the echelons um, and uh, currently own two businesses, like you said, and I'm still in the military. I'm in the Army Reserves at this, at this, at this time. So still in the military and two businesses. How do you manage that? I have no life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult. It's, uh, I don't have a lot of personal time to do things, so, um, but it's, it's, it's definitely rewarding. It's rewarding. I don't have to. I can kind of make my own schedule, and it's it's exciting to see people consume my product, and they and they definitely like it. So that's it's it's kind of nice. It's rewarding. It is right? for sure. Yeah. So you've been in military for how many years? Uh for about twenty years now. Wow. Since nineteen ninety six. So you feel like skills and experience in military helped you somehow in business? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that the military you learn. Uh, a lot of intangible things that you learn from the military, you learn about resilience. And I, I've seen a lot of service members, when they go into small businesses, they have resilience. So if there's an obstacle, they're not going to quit. They're going to go and fight through that obstacle, right? In the military, you can't just take off your rucksack and tell your commander, I quit, I'm too tired. Or if there's barbed wire, you can't just say, I, I'm not going to go through that, sir. So in the, it's, it's the same with, 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 with a small business. It's all obstacles. And um, I think that the military teaches you to have resilience, uh, to be innovative, um, and yeah, just to fight, to just, just to fight through some of the tough times. Um, military does give you a lot of tools that you could use, uh, especially for planning. Um, one of the things that we have in the military is called troop leading procedures. So it's like a seven step process of things you gotta do before an operation. You can use that same checklist for your business, which I do all the time. Um, military also has a uh, tool called the one third, two third rule. Have you heard of it? No? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, all it is is just that you spend one third of your time planning, two thirds uh, doing mm. operations, right? So you don't want to spend too much time planning. On the other hand, you do want to do some planning. You want to give yourself enough time to actually execute. And it's the same thing with a small business. If you spend too much time planning, there you, you you don't have time to do anything, right? So too many people get bogged down with trying to plan, over plan too much. And um, like I said earlier, it's uh, um, you know you make that plan, it goes out the window as soon as you start your business. The same with an operation, so. Yes, it's definitely helped me. <laughs> so military helped you to start your yes, businesses, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so what do you think what's harder, military or business? Uh, I would say business is harder, yeah. With the military, you can easily just kind of go back to your commander or you say, I need more money. Mm -hmm. um, I need to have, you know, I need to get this thing fixed. There's a work order for it. For a small business, you have to generate your own revenue, right? You can't go and submit a request to the government and say, give me money because they're not going to do it. Um, if something's broken, you have to fix it. Um, you've got to do all the, like for me in the military as a, as, as a commander, I actually had a S1 shop that was in charge of personnel and paperwork and things like that. So they would do all my paperwork. Now I do all my paperwork myself. I've got to do all the documentation myself. I've got to fix everything myself. You know, uh, if something is not funded, I have to find the money for it to pay for it. So I would say, yeah, uh, small business is way harder than the military for sure. Which is interesting because a lot of people believe that once they start a business, they will have so much free time and it will be so much easier, right? But you think it's not true? Right? Oh, no, not. I mean, I say, I mean, for the military, if I could con contrast it, uh, I'd wake up at maybe 5.30. I'd spend you know, like two hours during PT, you know, come back, take a shower, drink my coffee, check my emails. Um, you know, we do some work with some meetings, and then, you know, then you have your lunch, then you come back, and you're pretty much done by like 7 o'clock, unless you're 
five o'clock unless you're in the field. Um, as an entrepreneur, it's like I'm up at you know seven o'clock and I'm just like picking up deliveries. I'm working on the website, doing SEO content management with the website, emails, uh, dealing with construction, fixing things. I still got to cook at one of the restaurants. You know, I have to go and uh, uh, you know cover down on maybe someone's shift, um, and it, I, it, it doesn't stop till ten o'clock, and I wake up and do it all over again. So there's less time in uh, a small business than you would in the military. So how do you manage your time? So many things to do uh, in a day. <laughs> do you have some I'm, kind of software, no, time management I, software, anyone's helping you? I try to, um, well, I, well my, I have a really good staff, right? So my staff will remind me of stuff I have to do because I, I definitely forget. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll tell my the important stuff, my staff will call me up and say, hey, don't forget to put this order in, don't forget to fix this thing. Um, but for the most part, I just try to do I mean, I try to manage it so like every day, like my, my rhythm is I try to, um, like Mondays I try to work on deliveries, do all the orders I have to do. Maybe Tuesdays I might do content management on our website, on our, you know, do like Google searches, Yelp searches. Um, but yeah, I, I, no, you're, it's, it's, it's difficult because you're putting out fires a lot too, you know. Um, constantly there's something that happens in the restaurant or the bar that I have to fix, so. Um, it's pretty disorganized, I guess. <laughs> it can be disorganized for sure. It can be, yeah. right? So uh, let's go back to your businesses. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit more about your business concept? When did you start it? Okay. And how did you start it? Well, I started Kapolei Karaoke back in 2015. I kind of knew I wanted to transition from active duty to being a, a business owner. And I was driving down North South Road going towards uh, Kamakana Ali, and I saw the amount of cars there. And I realized, wow, there's a lot of people that I can market a product to. Um, and Karaoke just seemed like the easiest thing to do. It's something that I like doing, that local people love doing, and there's nothing in the area. So I think that day I went home, called a broker up, and said, I want to do, I, I want you to find a property for me. So they found the property, um, I got the price, and based off that, I had the business plan. So um, that was like November 2015. We signed the lease like mid-November. I brought in a, a, a contractor to build everything out while I was building the website, while I was building the concept up. You know, I was doing all the legal things and stuff like that. And then um, again, VBOC helped us out, helped us out with that too. Um, opened the doors in January 1st. So initially we started off with four rooms, uh, four karaoke rooms. It was a bring your own alcohol. Eventually we added another room, so we had five rooms. Then we added another room, the space next to us, they went out of business, so we took over their lease. And then we expanded, within a year we expanded to having six rooms. Um, the smallest room fits like four people, the biggest one probably fits about like 60 people. Um, and then we got our liquor license this year, so now we do like bottle service, so alcohol in the rooms as well. And then, um, after I got the liquor license, I kind of saw that, okay, well, you know, I can probably do another business because of the Kapolei Karaoke was profitable, so I was like, I want to you know, challenge myself. So I heard there was a property for lease over in Haleiwa. Um, uh, it used to be a bar before, so we, I got the numbers, the same thing. I think I opened the place up in a month. Um, we got the concept down, got the team together, and within a month, we had the doors open there as well. Um, and we've been operational for that other place for about six months. Um, it's a restaurant. We do mostly Hawaiian food. Smoked meats, uh, fish, full bar, and we try to perpetuate Hawaiian culture through music, through dance. Um, but yeah, uh, it was like a pretty fast process, actually. Um, yeah, it, it does seem like it yeah. was really fast. So we have a lot of clients coming in who are dreaming of starting a business, planning, but never actually starting a business. So what made you react so fast and get into the business, jump into the business so fast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very compulsive person. <laughs> I guess I just I just I believe that if you have an idea, um, you have to do something, right? You can't just have an idea and just talk about it. So I'm, I'm just a man of action. That's 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 basically it. You know, if you have an idea, you have to do something within the first five minutes of having that idea, or else you're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So when I had the idea for Kapolei Karaoke, like when it came into my mind, I immediately I called up the broker. Like within five minutes, I called the broker up. It was like find me a piece of property. It was the same thing with uh, Kwailoa Tavern. It was like, idea popped in my mind. I was like, okay. I put the pencil to the paper, um, called up the broker, like, let's, let's make this happen. So you just have to be a person of action, I guess. And I, you know, I don't really know why, but I guess I just, uh, it's just the way I've always been. So. That's great because, as I mentioned, a lot of people just get stuck in that planning phase yeah, yeah. and just hesitate too much, and sometimes it's really hard to move from there. Yeah, they're focused on the small details. And I think you, the details are important, but you want to look at the big picture, right? I've always been a big picture, strategic thinker. Um, but yeah, I've seen it, people, my, my, my partners, I mean, they're kind of, I love the guys, but 
they get stuck in the small details. Like, well, we can't open up yet because we don't have this particular beer brand yet. Like, it doesn't matter. Just, 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 just do it. You have to take action, right? So, um, but I get business plans from friends all the time, uh, and they'll keep working on the business plan and business plan and business plan, but they never actually do anything. So, um, but that's what separates us, I guess. That's what separates dreamers from doers, Exactly, right? yeah. Um, so what about your business planning process? Did you have a business plan or you just <laughs> actually decided and jumped in? No, I had a, well, I, I had a business. It was a general business plan, right? So I'm not, again, if you have, if you can't tell, I don't believe that you should like spend too much time planning. Mm -hmm. but you definitely need a plan. So I had a, I had a business plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to me, the, the most important thing is how much is it going to cost for the, the, the space? I see a lot of people that have a business plan that, you know, they, they don't answer the first question, which is how much does that space cost? They have a plan, but it's like, okay, well, you know, how do you know how much your product costs, right? So you have to know how much that space is, how much at least your, your fixed cost, how much is your fixed cost going to be? And the second thing is, what's your competition like? Mm -hmm. And I have those, I, I, once I get those two general ideas together, then I can kind of plan based off that. But I don't get too in the details of the plans because I, I found that, like I said, once you open the business up, the details are going to go out the window and the market's going to dictate the details and you're going to find that your staff, if they're good enough, they're going to actually fill in those details for you. You just want to make sure that you're going in the right direction. Um, so for Coppola, it was like I knew how much at least was going to cost. I knew there was no competition in the area um, and I built a plan based off that. And like I said, it took about a year for the plan to actually, I mean, it, it took about a year for us to come up with the, pro with the product that we have now. Um, because it was always like revi you know, re revising itself. Um, but uh, I definitely had a plan. Um, and for Kualoa Tavern, it was the same thing too. I had a plan. I kind of knew what the product was going to be. I knew what the fixed costs were going to be. Um, and yeah, I just developed a plan and, uh, and we just executed. What are the things that you wish you knew before you actually started the business? Uh, well, I'll say that I didn't understand the leasing pro commercial leasing process mm -hmm. for the first business. I remember that we did the negotiations. I, I found out how much it would cost per square foot. Did the math, I was like, oh, I can make that in one weekend. It's easy. And then I got the first bill, and there was this thing called can fees on there. And I was like, it was like, it, it took my rent and doubled my rent. So my heart dropped. So I wish I had known at the beginning. It, did, it doesn't matter now, but I wish I knew at the beginning, kind of the, the leasing process, to have a lawyer go through your, your, your lease and explain those things to you so you have that plan. So you can account for those costs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the other thing too is just, is just human resources. I wish I had known, because I definitely wasted a lot of time with um, C team players, hiring people that wasn't right for the brand. Um, and you have to kind of trust your instincts with people, um, especially in the service industry. Obviously, if they're flying an airplane, you want them to have experience, right? But in the service industry, you just want to have that connection. You have to be emotionally intelligent. Um, and unfortunately, I tried to hire people that had a lot of experience um, but a very poor attitude. And as a result, we definitely lost a lot of money based off that. Um, the military teaches you that you have to be mentors to soldiers. You've got to coach them, train them, because you can't fire a soldier, right? You're in combat. You have to use that soldier. And I try to use those same principles for my business, and I, I found that, um, you know, it just when, when, when you try to do that in, in the civilian world, in a small business, you're just wasting money. And, uh, but, yeah, I wish I'd known um, how to better... And how, how to hire people better, I guess, at, 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 at the beginning of the process. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have right now for people who are looking for staff to hire for their small businesses? I would say trust your instincts. Mm -hmm. You're going to know, yeah, trust your instincts. There's a lot of people in the service industry that say, well, I have 10 years experience bartending. But how hard is bartending, right? It's like you're taking drink A and drink B and you pour it together and, oh, okay, here's your drink, right? You want to find people that have like a really good attitude that can project your brand, not people that are experienced in bartending or serving. Um, and you'll know that. I think, that you'll, I think you'll know that within the first five minutes of meeting somebody. You can meet them, talk to them. If you like them, then you know, okay, the customers are going to like them. And that's important. You can train them to do everything else, right? Uh, so I would say definitely trust your instincts uh, when, you're, when you're hiring people. And if they're not performing, uh, th there's a saying that I go by, right? If you can't change... Uh, Change people, but if you can't change people, then change people. Does that make sense? So basically, like, try to change them for your brand, but if they can't change for your brand, then change them out and find the right person. So I would say, yeah, my advice is um, don't rely on people's resume too much. Just go off that instinct feeling. You know, go off that, that, that connection you have with the, with, with the potential employee. 
Go with your gut feeling. Go with your gut feeling, yeah, it's absolutely. It's like, yeah, and you know, it's, I guess for me, when I first started, I felt like, well, I should go off their resume, you know, this, this person, they, they've had all these years, you know, bartending or serving or cooking, and I don't have any experience. Um, but I had a feeling in my gut that, oh, this person's, we don't have that connection. And sure enough, when they started um, the customer interaction, it, 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 it diminished our brand. And I kept them around too long when I should have gotten rid of them a lot faster. And as a result, we definitely lost some money off in the beginning. But now I know. It's a lesson learned. So hopefully other people can learn from my mistakes. Hopefully. Thank you yeah. for sharing. Uh, we're taking a little break and see you in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. And hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po. Mabuhay and aloha. Welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. Today I'm talking to Jason Kalani, owner of two businesses here in Hawaii. So Jason, we talked a lot about your first business, Kapolei Karaoke. What about your second business? Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, um, again, I found out that the space was available. Um, got in touch with the broker, ran the numbers. I was like, okay, we can, we can make this thing work out. Um, but I had to de develop a brand first, right? Um, so right about that time, my grandmother passed away. So we looked through her pictures and we kind of saw, you know, a lot of the old pictures from, from, from Kualoa Camp, which is where she's from. And my dad's from there. When my mom first came to America, my dad brought her there. So she had a lot of memories of that area too, right? So I decided to build a brand based off um, preserving the heritage of, of, of Kualoa Camp. Um, Haleiwa is very, uh, very tourist oriented now, not a lot of place for locals. Um, I knew that. I knew that locals were going to Milani if they want to eat dinner, if they want to have a beer, they, they go to Milani or Waiho, but they stay out of Haleiwa because there's no place for locals to go to because the prices are all for, the prices and the food are for tourists, right? A lot of pizzas, a lot of hamburgers, a lot of Thai food now there. So um, based off that, I knew there was a void for like local culture, local food. So um, yeah, we developed, we developed a menu uh, based off of um, some of the recipes that my, my, my family had. Um, and uh, we brought in Hawaiian bands, Hawaiian music, uh, just did everything we could to perpetuate the Hawaiian culture. And I think now it's catching on to Haleiwa for sure. A lot of locals are coming out to Haleiwa again. Um, we try to do live music every night. Uh, we try to showcase like a different Hawaiian singer at night. Um, on the weekends, we're starting to do live bands on the weekends, mostly Hawaiian and reggae bands. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, that's what we have going on in Haleiwa. So Kapole and Haleiwa, you have to be in both places. <laughs> Every day, it's uh, it's tough because um, no, you're right. It's tough. Uh, the labor market in Haleiwa is hard. It's hard to find people in Haleiwa to work. Um, so I find myself cooking a lot, or bartending, or serving, or whatever I have to do. But I still have to go to Kapolei, and I'm, and I'm fortunate because in Kapolei I had enough time to train the staff. But I still have to be there to see what's going on. Um, so typical night for me is I'll probably get to the restaurant at about like two o'clock. I'll start the prep work. Um, we'll start cooking, close the kitchen down at maybe 10 o'clock, and then this is like a Friday night, and I'll have to drive from Kapolei, from Haleiwa to Kapolei at about 10 o'clock just to make sure they're doing their job, you know, just check out the inventory, make sure all the systems work, you know, um, just making sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. And I'll probably stay there till about like 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, and then I'll drive back from Haleiwa, from uh, Kapolei back to Haleiwa to check up on that spot, right? So it just, I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. Um, it's, it's hard. If we, if we miss a delivery, I've got to pick up all the supplies and deliver it to Kapolei and Haleiwa, which mm. is uh, a nightmare sometimes. It's very time consuming. But um, yes. yeah, I, I wish I had uh, opened up another business in Kapolei <laughs> closer. That would have been nicer. But you know, um, 
But yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely rewarding though. And it's working out so far, right? For yeah. You, it seems like it's successful. Yeah, I, yeah it's, it, it depends how you define success, but Couple A is definitely generating a profit for sure. Um, mm -hmm. That's the one thing I found is that Couple A, it's, like, it's, it's doing well because A, I trust in my instincts. You know, I brought in the right people. In fact, the first guy I hired in Couple A, um, he just sent me an email. You know, I, put the, I put the ad out before we even had the business up and running. He sent me an email like, I want to work for you. I want to work in this. So I, I brought him in. And uh, he had no concept of you know, what we're doing. He was like, what's the job? I was like, I don't know what the job is. I have no idea. We'll figure it out together. But he had a really good personality, a lot of Instagram followers, and he's been very instrumental in, 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 in bringing the people in. So great staff there, very excited staff. Because um, we're not dealing with food, I don't have a lot of fixed costs. right? My mm -hmm. fixed cost is pretty much just the overhead for electricity, insurance, and uh, the rent. Right, that's about it. And then, of course, I do licensing fee fees for the music, so labor. So I have very set fixed costs there, not a lot of variable costs. So that's why it's like done really well. Great staff, easy costs. Holly Eva has been a little different. I tried a different approach in Holly Eva. I tried to hire people based off their resume. So again, it definitely diminished the brand. And when you're dealing with food, um, yeah, the the food is like you have to push out a lot of volume for the for for the food to work. You have to kind of understand like, you know. Um, how much it costs, portions is important. Mm -hmm. And I think the first chef I hired, he was a good chef, but he didn't understand the business portion of it, right? So he would, you know, he would buy like, uh, like a $10 per pound prime rib and resell it um, for about like $10 a plate without actually measuring the steaks. Mm -hmm. So I went back and did the, run the numbers, see how much we were losing. And I said, okay, we're not making any money off the steak, right? So. Um, but I mean, we've, we've, we fixed that though, you know, it's a, a lot of it's because I was naive and I wasn't prepared for the restaurant industry, but it's, it's doing really well now though. We've got that figured out, so. Yeah, so from our experience, restaurant industry is one of the riskiest, right? Yeah. So, so many challenges. How do you make sure that you are protected from those challenges? How do you stay ahead of the game? Oh man, I'm just, I'm doing research all the time. I'm constantly looking at, constantly, listen to podcasts about running a restaurant. I'm constantly reading the trade magazines, always looking at prices, um, just trying to understand the food cost, looking at the competitors. You know, if I make something, is anybody else making it? Um, but you know, no, you're right, it's, it's, it's incredibly difficult. And, I, and I'm still learning today as, as, as we go on. Um, I'm definitely gonna reach out to the VBOC and, and check in with you guys to see if I can find a mentor to help me make sure I have the right prices for the food. Um, but yeah, I think the important thing is just uh, you want to make sure that you have the right portion size and that you're, you know, um, that everything is accounted for. You know, you can't just throw rice in there and say, oh, it's just free rice, right? You have to take that into account because if you're going through like, you know, two bags a week, that's 40 bucks, it adds up, right? So you want to make sure that that's accounted for. And, um, but we have a handle on it now. And I, my, mm -hmm. my, my advice to anybody opening a restaurant is that you want to have a hand on all costs. You don't want to a, I would say you don't have to hire a chef. A cook is good enough for most restaurants. You don't, want to, you don't have to hire a five-star chef. And B, I would say know what goes in the recipes. Just because you have a cook, don't think that they understand the business side of it because a lot of them don't, right? They're just going to buy whatever they need and try to make it taste good. Um, you want to have your hand in like, the recipes, know exactly what goes in there, know exactly how much everything costs. And then with that knowledge, you can actually build a profit, right? You can start controlling costs and d develop your own profit. So great staff, a lot of research, education, yeah. mentoring. What else is important in running a business? Oh, okay. <laughs> Math. We, we mentioned a lot. What about finance, financial planning, oh. accounting? Did you have any of that uh, experience, yeah. knowledge? So I have an MBA. So oh, um, right. with, with my MBA, I, 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 I focused on accounting. So I know, you know, I, I know about financials, I understand ratios, and yeah, I would say that math is extremely, extremely important. A lot of entrepreneurs are like, oh, I hate math or whatever. Um, I build pretty detailed planning sheets. Um, I run ratios like almost every week to see exactly you know, where we're profitable, where we're not profitable at. Um, in fact, just yesterday I built like a kind of a balance sheet, a projected plan, a balance sheet, right? Where it's like how much money is coming in per day, what's going out by day. And I did that for about like, you know, like, like six months out just to make sure that we're, we're gonna be profitable. Um, but yes, you have to have um, the accounting is good, um, but I think that you have to have to know how to do everything for for, for an entrepreneur. Because you know, I knew how to do accounting, um, plumbing. I I never done before. I have to, I have to learn how to be a plumber. 
um, website management, SEO content, um, search engine optimization, I've had to learn how to do that as well because as you know, in today's business, um, uh, for, for brick and mortar, you're not going to win by just having the best looking restaurant on the street, right? It's based off of the uh, digital landscape. You want to beat them in, your, in, in that Google search. When you Google restaurants, Haleiwa, you want to be the first one that pops up, right? So you have to understand SEO management as well. Laws, uh, you know, city and county laws, uh, state laws you have to understand. Um, yeah, it's just there's a lot of stuff you have to learn about cooking, you know, bartending, serving, just uh, psychology, just uh, this goes on. You have to be an expert at everything. Yeah, and we always say that you have to have a good bail team, which is banker, accountant, insurance agent, lawyer, right? Did For sure. you have all of those? Yeah, I have a great lawyer. Team? His name is Mike Sweetman, actually, and uh, he, he's actually a veteran as well. I'm going to have him talk to you guys, too. Mm -hmm. um, we actually were on an exercise in Singapore together, me and my lawyer, about three years ago. So we're in a, in a bus in Singapore. He was a JAG officer. I was a fire support officer, and we just started talking about business. I was like, yeah, I'm going to start my own business one day. He was like, oh, if you do it, you should give me a call because I want to be like a small business lawyer or something. So um, two years later, I gave him a call, and we, he, he, he helped me start the business. Um, but yeah, we got a really good, really good law. I, I got a really good guy that does law for me, a really good lawyer for, that, that I have. Um, the accounting, uh, I think with QuickBooks, you can do most of the accounting yourself if you're savvy with that. Um, but you definitely want to have someone that's going to help you with projections. If you don't know how to do projections, then... Um, it's very difficult to make decisions. You're kind of just flying by the seat of your pants. But um, all in all, I think I have a pretty good team. Great. So we are about to finish. So can we find you somewhere on social media? Uh, where do we find you? Yeah, you can find us on um, my Kapolei Karaoke. If you're looking to rent a room for a party, um, you can book online at www.kapoleikaraoke.net. 24-7 bookings. Um, Again, we have rooms that range from four people to 60 people. Uh, for Kualoa Tavern, if you're looking for, if you're in Haleiwa, you want to have a, a drink, we have our pineapple soju, which is really, really popular. Uh, try some of our smoked briskets. Um, our website there is www.kualoatavern.com, and we're located next to Long's in Haleiwa. Thank you very much, Jason. Looking forward to visit your businesses. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more adventures in small business every Thursday, 11 a.m. Have a great day.